background. And this is something we can archive just so that, you know, if anyone ever comes at us, we have this information. But you can find all this online, but I put it together so that we can go over it real quickly. Um, and you may already know it, but we can just take a look. Host has disabled screen share. Um, Let's do desktop. I have to allow something one second. That's it. <laughs> um, while uh, while Kemp is falling down the nozzle hole, um, the so, so my one the, my one concern with something like Domestica, just as I'm looking at it, is that it's, it feels like very discounted, and I think we're like super high value. So I wouldn't want a site to be like eighty percent discounted on Design Future Fiction with. Your host, I think that's a, the Bray. Yeah, that's an easy that's an easy fix. I think what we do is we we have like whatever the price of the 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 course is like ninety nine dollars. We cross it out and we go like four hundred and ninety nine. We say like yeah yeah cross it out and go up. That's it. 500 percent yeah. premiumed. Yeah, now you're thinking like an ad man. Good job. Yeah. I like that. This ain't cheap. <laughs> this is not cheap. I'm not looking to like this is a mass market, and if it's too much for you, oh well. For a limited time only. I, yeah, I, I don't get, I don't, I mean, I guess this is what I learned from doing Amada, which is, in, you know, incredibly marked up product. It's like people appreciate something that has value and, and it's think, unique. I think like, like one challenge though, is like a lot of the content of those kind of sites is here's how to use this program. Like, so it's really structured. It's like a very friendly problem. There's like a beginning, you don't know how to program, you use the program and there's an end, you know how to use the program, which has been designed for people to use it's really structured well, and that... they, they don't do so well at like the fundamentals like this is how to do math this is how to <laughs> like do physics and this this is how to do design I think falls into that kind of a uh, space because what like what does it look like when you do good design well that's really hard to answer and like how do you do how do you do a course so that at the end people know how to do good design I think at the end, some people are just never going to be able to do good design. Um, so, like, I think that there's a like a structural mismatch between the kind of thing that we need to uh, like teach and the kind of uh, thing that people expect from those kind of sites. Um, yeah, we should definitely keep talking about that. But Camp, let's uh, let's see this chore code. Cool. So, all right, so let's do, all right, come on now. Or as I was calling it, the sew and tell. Sew and tell, I love that. I've never heard that before in all my fashion years. Um, okay, so chore coat. So the basic history of it, it first appeared in France uh, at the late 18th century. It's an outerwear garment, durable. Um, it is, a, people kind of attribute it to the, uh, the, the term blue collar. Um, it was, its original name is Bleu, bleu de Travailler, which means blue work. Um, it's Blue comes from this benzonite or benzate blue dye, um, sort of like an indigo -y dye. And this is what people looked like wearing them. So this is what your like traditional individual from the late 19th century would be wearing. The, the coat and the pants actually go together. So both the coat and the pant would be blue. Um, they would often be the same color blue, but sometimes the 
the pants might be a lighter blue and the coat would be a darker blue. And then there's a version of it that is all black. Um, and the black would be considered, sometimes it would be considered like church outfit. So it could be considered a little bit more elegant. So the image here on your left is a vintage version and the image here on your right is a current version for sale. So Le, <clears throat> Le Mont Saint-Michel sells basically as close to the original as you can buy. So they started making this in Normandy in 1913. And it's basically as close again to the original as you can get. Um, and you can see from this image or from the slide that they look pretty much identical. Um, they're not cheap if you go for like a true French version, but you can find vintage versions for as, you know, as little as like 40 bucks. Um, and it's a pretty classic look and they age really well. So very simple construction, pretty elegant. The basic construction of them, again, it's usually made out of this like cotton twill or canvas, uh, there's usually three or four large pockets. There's a collar, there's no lapel. That was you know, a big distinction for, for the jacket. There's top stitching, uh, it's unlined typically. Easy buttons, no pleats, and it has a boxy frame to it that hangs straight. So that's, there's no tapering um, and there's no like form fittedness to it. Sometimes there's rivets on it, but that's about it. It did not make its appearance in the US and it did not get called a chore coat until it got, came to the US um, until Levi's and Carhartt picked it up. So there's debate over which company started it, but basically you could say Carhartt or Levi's started it here in this country in the early 1920s. Um, Carhartt and Levi's both have versions of it starting around 1922 to 25 in jean or this brown, duck bill material. And here's a, an image of what Carhartt had. Um, so the original chore coat was actually in this country called the engineer coat or simply called the coat, which I thought was kind of funny. Um, and then became known as the chore coat. So it took a couple of years actually for it to gain yeah. popularity, but this image is one of the first images of it kind of becoming a sex object, if you will. So Paul Newman and Cool Hand Luke in 1967 wearing this coat. Um, for those of you who have seen the movie, he does a lot of outdoor labor in this coat, sort of wears this in a rustic. Very sexy. important film. Very important. Yeah. And I mean, it's gone on, you know, so this film really was... I think this film is the moment that the chore coat left its humble labor life and entered into cinematic mainstream history. And you're going to see in this slideshow, like we're going to depart from laborers to now the rest. So after Paul Newman wore it, it kind of had a little bit of a moment here and there, but it wasn't really until Bill Cunningham, who's a New York Times photographer um, started wearing one that it became popular again. So, you know, one might think of all people who is Bill Cunningham and how did he make it popular? Um, he just wore it basically every day and he did a lot of fashion photography. The story goes that he found it in a French uh, pawn shop or vintage shop. He paid something like 20 euros for it or 20, 20 bucks basically for it. Um, that's what he wore pretty much every day. And I have a picture of him with Anna Wintour just to kind of hammer in the fact that he really found this to be a super fashion icon moment. So he's known like Chorco and Bill Cunningham pretty much are synonymous together. Um, and then it became really popular throughout the 90s as well. You got Tupac over here wearing it. It's wildly popular garment now it's just the most simple garment to do anything with and anything in so you've got Bella Hadid in it as a fashion moment you've got you know Kurt Russell over here I'm assuming this is at Telluride or Aspen or something um in a Carhartt version of it so you know it is a celebrity staple it's a classic it's it's just a super easy coat to just throw on everything 
and everybody makes a version of it. So that's sort of our issue, right? So everybody makes a gene, a corduroy, a, a leather, a you name it, there is a million versions of this coat. Um, so there is a, there are very few permutations of this coat that have yet to be done. Um, there's quilted versions, Gucci's made a version. There's not a runway show that comes down a season that doesn't have some version of a chore coat in it. Um, so that sort of leaves us the, the task of being innovative, which I think is good for us. We can go the straight up route of creating a chore coat with our name on it, but I also want to kind of think about it in a different way. And so what I was thinking about this week was, you know, one of the things that I really resonate with this coat is the color. So the blue dye of this chore coat, the original like French chore coat, it comes from this indigo dye and it comes from what I guess what I find really fascinating about this when you start to research it a little bit more is that this indigo was originally reserved only for nobility, right? And so specifically in France, the the royal color was this indigo blue. Um, so I did not know that the blue in the French flag stood for nobility. And when you look at, this is an image of what no nobility would wear, and this is a costume from the Met Gala right in that color blue so the blue is synonymous in france with nobility with royalty it has this long history in it and it wasn't until i think the 18th century where globalization and trade routes really got built up that this dye became so much more prevalent and then all of a sudden you went from this image on the left to this image on the right and there's something about this that i really love conceptually um and then I started thinking about this a little bit more and I was like, okay, well, how does this relate to us? And how does this relate to the time that we're in? And the, yes, we're in 2022, but we're in a futures lab. And so like, what is sort of, you know, what is our version of nobility now? And what is our version of work now? Um, so I was thinking a lot about this concept of nobility. And to me, nobility in this time in space really comes back down to education or knowledge. And then I was sort of thinking about how these grand libraries were in these castles of you know, nobility. And now I think about how knowledge is really housed in these labs or these educations, uh, you know, these institutions. And so I have an image here on the right of MIT Media Labs. And then it started making me think like, well, that's really like it's kind of a privilege to be doing what we're doing, right? Like I think of being a design futurist as a huge privilege and it's exciting to think about what comes next and to play around with it and then also be intentional about it. So it kind of led me to thinking like, all right, we're, this chore coat really could be this perfect intersection of what we're doing. So I want to prompt and I can't do the design workshop now because I have a, um, I am on a panel this afternoon or, in an hour about queer metaverse. So I have to run, but I do want to prompt some questions about how I want to move forward with this coat. And that is to think about what is a futures chore coat. So I want to think about what chores we're doing in the future. I want to think about what does this object exist? Like where does this object exist in the future, both digitally and physically? What materials both digitally and physically is it created out of? Um, and what does one, how does one chore? Like what is the, even the definition of chore in, in a coat? So this is sort of where I want to lead off. And if you guys want to, I can add this to the discord, but I would love if you guys want to contribute to this, I'd like to I create a Miro board for us to kind of dump all this into. So that's all I've got for right now. And then I've got some other mood boards of things that I'm thinking, but I, don't want to show them until I've got other people's thoughts. So any feedback? For that was amazing. Yeah, yeah. super Love amazing, it. Camp. Good stuff. Cool. I can't Great. see anybody, so I can't tell if anybody just like popped off. Where is everybody? That is always the shitty part about virtual presentation. <laughs> <laughs> anybody else? Um, yeah. Cool. Stop sharing. There's everybody. Cool. So yeah, I think for me, the I'll just reiterate before I have to hop off. The, the point for me for this code is that I think, 
you know, Dre, you were talking about this on our last call. There's a, it, it, to me, it exists both digitally and physically. Um, I want to create a physical piece of merchandise that we can wear and wear it proudly. Um, I've got another mood board that I want to show as sort of like a persona of customer who I think would be wearing this. But I also thought I don't want to like force us into a direction because my aesthetic, it's not, it's not like my aesthetic is going to lead this. Um, so I want to do a design ideation session. So I'll put that out there. Everyone who wants to join, I'd love to have you be a part of it. Um, but I do want a digital and physical version. So that's why the questions are somewhat big and small, right? Like what are, you know, do we want to just do a straight up chore coat that is a physical version? And then do we want to do this outlandish version that exists digitally? Like what are our digital chores, right? I mean, there are questions that I think we need to start asking ourselves to really create something kind of badass. So I love I love it. I th I think a like a metaverse version of a chore coat, and you're right. Like, you need a, a place to put your stuff. You need a yeah. You know, what chores might you need? And I, I think the, I think that's a great that's a great idea. And that buying the physical one means that you're attached to the digital one. Um, yeah, I think I think that that's uh, that's that's awesome. I uh, one I love the history background. It's great. I always love how, like the past is the biggest inspiration for the future. It's like, you can't That's really what I think of futures. Yeah. Yeah. It's the, you know, you can't really meaningfully think about the future unless you've had a chance to really understand the past. So I, I love it. I think this is really, really great. And I love your, the blue chore coat nobility, uh, the noble workers. I think that's a, that's a, that's a, an awesome little idea that you, uh, you spun there. So yeah, I, yeah, I can't wait for whenever we meet next week to, uh, to, to jam on this. Nice. Yeah. I, when I tell people that I come to this call, they're always like, I think they think I'm like the most privileged person they've ever met. They're just like, what the fuck are you doing on Friday morning? You know? And then when I talk about what we've talked about, they either get annoyed with me or they're just like, you're too, like, there's a, there's sort of a disconnect sometimes when we talk about things and I don't even talk eloquently in this group. So I, I, you know, I'm not great with language, but <laughs> It is interesting how I feel like right now in this time period, especially when even using words like metaverse and decentralization and DAO and all this stuff, like you're sort of segmenting yourself off in a world of nobility and privilege and class. And there's something interesting. I just have this like that vision of those guys, those like French workers, like usurping the world. Like what, and not to get all weird, but then you're like the mining for crypto. It's like, you know, there's this element of all of this is sort of like building off of itself, right? There's something interesting about it. Um, I spun out on it, so clearly. But <laughs> I just like the idea of a crypto mining helmet. Just thinking of the accessories that might go with that. Right. I mean, they chose blue because they're mimicking nobility, right? Because they're not noble, but they also chose blue because it hides dirt, right? So there's a functionality to it. So it's like mimicking Which, nobility and then functionality. So metaphorically appropriate for, for the nobility that hides their dirt. Right. There's just so much to it. I'm like, and it's funny because, you know, Julian, you just said chore code. And it's like, then I started researching. I was like, there's actually so much to this that's actually quite rich. And then it's super appropriate for us because we also do work. And then we're also kind of nobility, right? In the sense that a lot of people don't get the privilege of doing stuff like this, right? And I don't think, I'm not saying that to be elitist, but I am saying like, I take pride in the fact that we get to do this. There's something I enjoy. So I think there's something that is something there to that. Um, I have to run, but I am glad I got to show you that. I will send out a, does everybody wanna do Wednesday? Is everybody on the same time zone or is everyone all over the place? Yeah. Would Wednesday morning and evening be best or should we do just one? Well, I'm on the East Coast and like this time is totally fine for me. Yeah, East okay. Coast so, too. Yeah. I don't think we have anybody international beyond that, right? Or David, are you further? Cool. 
I'll just yeah, do two. I, I'm central, um, and so this time works for me too. I'll do two, then I'll in case do you one. You can't out. read. <laughs> oh no, Kansas. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm celebrating. No, it's just what I happen to be wearing today. All right, I'll do two. I'll do one at um, 9 a.m. and then I'll do one at five in case there's anybody on the West Coast who can't join because of work stuff. Cool. That's cool. I'm awesome. psyched. I'm, yeah. I'm going to be able to make both. <laughs> yeah. Are and I'll put the questions. Oh, sorry. I'll put the questions out there, but if you can, if you have a Miro account, it'd be great to do it. So I'll do, I was hoping to run it like I was going to do it, like I've done with my classes where basically we just start doing an ideation session. So um, we can each have a board and then throw up digital post-its and just jam out, do like a little design jam session. Cool. Kim, coordinate with either myself or Dre about just kind of putting in, if, if, in case, you you know, we'll just help. So to set up yeah, the yeah. an event in uh, mm -hmm. in Discord and then I guess it's a question like your preference. My preference is Zoom because I find Discord meetings complicated and my audio doesn't work and stuff. Um, so I would bias towards doing it on Zoom. Uh, but what would be your preference in terms of what you're comfortable with navigating and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, I don't, I don't care either way. Okay. Um, cause we can do the zoom audio or zoom video and then just, and the great, the, 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 and there's probably a way of discord, but you know what, I'm, I'm sort of prioritizing life over figuring out plugins and stuff, uh, yeah. and bots is I know that with zoom, cause you know, that we could do, if we record it, we get really clean audio separated by track from all the people. So if we ever want to yeah. something for the archives, mm -hmm. you know, when we do our catalog resume in 30 years. <laughs> oh my God. Our first fashion show, it's going to be perfect. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the, uh, okay. the screen. So awesome guys. We'll set that. We'll set that up. And uh, yeah, super looking forward. To it. Really amazing stuff. I'm cool. I'm so glad that worked out. Awesome. I'm, I'm actually, I'm going to, I'm going to share it with a friend. We were talking about short codes yesterday. He's actually talking about getting, a tailor for himself because he's triple XL and the stuff that he wants to wear, he can't yeah. find. So he's like, I got short coats, but I can't, I don't fit in them. <laughs> Is he in LA? Uh, no, he's in Springfield, Missouri. Oh God, I have no tailors out there for him. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, everybody. I'll see you on Wednesday. Okay. All right. Good yeah. luck with Bye. your metaverse talk. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I think I need to hop too. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna be able to. Let me ask you guys something. I think that first hour was fucking awesome. I want to thank you for that. And uh, would would you guys be opposed if that was like um, a podcast supplement, like reflections oh. on the on the because there there tons tons of people are kind of like 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 everyone else did, and like I felt, and I think like most people there who were on the panel felt, man, it could have gone longer. Mm. And it was just, it was just, there were just practical constraints, you know, that, that for ASU it wasn't, wasn't that they didn't think it could, but they're like, you know, we've got stuff to do. I got to go teach like that kind of stuff. Yeah. I, I felt like it, it, uh, uh, you know, everyone just did the introductions and you're already 30 minutes into the one. The I would have, I would have skipped the introductions. I yeah. Skipped them, but that's okay. They did a good job, really earnest folks organizing that kind of stuff. So I appreciate that they were able to get everyone there to begin with. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, all right. I'm going to take the dog for a walk. All right. Have a good walk. You guys are have awesome. Have a good weekend, y'all. Bye. You guys too. All right. Bye. See ya. Bye.